Hi, this is Jim Minatel with ROX. This video walkthrough is from ROX's beginning ASP.NET 4.5. In it, you'll see how to install Microsoft's Visual Studio 2012 Express for the web. This is a free set of web tools for building and running ASP.NET web pages. You'll create your first ASP.NET website and you'll even include a variable from the server in your first page. All you need to get started is the download from www.microsoft.com forward slash express. There are code examples at rocks.com, but for this walkthrough we won't get into the parts of the book that need downloaded code. At the Express download site, be sure to get the right version. In the current layout, the left hand side, click Express for the web, then click Download. After you've clicked download, you're going to see two options, install now and download. Download would let you download it to install later. The install link that I'm clicking starts the installer and downloads the pieces you need as they're being installed. And then click the big green install now button. After that, the first thing you see is an informational page describing the key parts of the ASP.NET installation. There's nothing to do here. Wait a few seconds, then you'll see a familiar security question asking if you want to run or save the download. In this case, you should choose Run. This begins the Web Platform Installer. After a few seconds, you'll see the next prompt. There's nothing to do on this screen, but if you're like me, you may want to see what the options are. Don't change anything here. Once you've looked at it, you can click OK. Then start the installer by clicking Install. The next thing you'll see is a list of all the items the installer will install, along with links to all of their licensing agreements. I don't know about you, but I don't have time to read 10 or 20 licensing agreements, so I'm just clicking I accept. This will begin the actual installation. Depending on your download speed and computer, this could take a few minutes. I'm going to cut to the end for the purposes of this video. I've skipped to the end of about eight minutes of downloading and installing, and here we're finally installing the last few pieces. Once those are done, you'll see a screen that shows you everything that was installed, and you can click Finish. After that, you see a list of optional items. You won't need these for the video or anywhere in the book, so you can just click Exit. Now we're ready to start Visual Studio Express. I'm doing this from search in Windows 8 and starting VS Express for the web. The first thing you'll need now is a product key. The good news is product keys are free, but you do have to register to get one. Click register online. This will open up a browser window where you can sign into your Microsoft account. This would be an account from live.com or one of its predecessors and you'll log in like any other site with an email address and a password. Once I finally remember my password, I'm logged in and I'll skip over filling out most of this form, which I know you can handle on your own. At the end of the form, click Next and the next page will have a product key. I don't know how unique or special these are, but I've hidden mine in the video. You'll copy that key and paste it into the Visual Studio Express registration screen. Copy paste and then click next. You'll get a message that the product key has been applied so click close. Now VS Express applies some settings for the first time it starts. After VS Express starts you'll see the VS Express start page. I'm going to ignore the available update prompt for now. 
The left-hand side of the Start page has some useful shortcuts to common tasks. The middle pane has links to helpful articles. And the right-hand pane is the Solution Explorer, which you'll see more of in a minute. For now, what we need to do is go to the File menu and choose New Website. We can also choose this from the Start page shortcuts. Wherever you choose it, though, be sure to choose New Website. There are several other choices that all look similar. Be sure the one you get says New Website. The New Website dialog has several more options. Under Templates on the left, choose Visual Basic or C Sharp. If you already know one of these languages, pick the one you know, as this book covers them both. If not, pick C Sharp like I'm doing. In the middle of the new website dialog box, pick ASP.NET Web Form Site. Again, from several other similar options here, be sure to get ASP.NET Web Form Site, then click OK. After a few seconds of creating files, VS Express opens and looks different. The top right hand side is the Solution Explorer. This lists all of the files and parts of the ASP.NET website VS Express created, and as you see, it's a long list. Always be sure you're clicking the correct item in that list or you'll get confused quickly. For now, you need to double-click the default.aspx page in that list. That opens default ASPX in the source view on the left. This file has the code that your ASP.NET server is going to run and turn into a web page that it sends to your browser. We're going to make some easy changes in this file so you can see how easy it is to create a web page from ASP.NET. Near the middle of the page, there's an H3 tag that begins, we suggest the following. That's the boilerplate text that Microsoft includes in the Visual Studio Express project. We're going to delete that text and add some of our own. Select everything starting with that H3 all the way down to the closing OL tag and delete it. Be sure to try to delete full lines. Then after you've deleted that, start a new line where it was and we're going to put in a couple of example lines. first line we're going to put in type and left bracket and then an H2 as you type notice there's a drop-down list of hints that's called IntelliSense and it helps you type only correct code press tab after the H2 and it completes the H2 tag for you I've added the heading hello world start another line a left bracket and a P tag you see IntelliSense again complete the P tag with a tab. IntelliSense completes it. Type in some unique text of your own so you can see that this is your own web page. And then after you've typed whatever it is you want to call it, like Roxas beginning at ASP.NET 4.5, we're going to type in some code that will call a variable from our server. To do this, Type a left bracket, percent, colon, date time, dot now, dot to string. Again, you see IntelliSense working all this time, and then tab, and then put in open and close parentheses. This is going to read the time from the server and send it back as part of the web page when the server sends the web page to the browser. That's the end of the web page coding and we're ready to start this and see it run in a web browser. To do this we're going to go to run it click debug start without debugging. When you do this at the bottom of Visual Studio Express you see a new pane called Output. This shows what Visual Studio is doing to create your website from your code. If there are any errors, which there weren't, it would show them to you there. Then it opens your web browser and opens the default.aspx page and you can see the Hello World heading we added 
and it's followed by the unique text and the time from the server. So that's all there is to it. We'll take a quick look and see IS Express down in your Windows taskbar. That's the web server that you installed that lets you run these ASP.NET web pages that you created and sends them to the browser. That's the end of this Rocks Beginning ASP.NET 4.5 walkthrough. The book describes many of the screens and processes you just saw in fantastic detail and continues on to many more tasks. If you're interested in learning to write your own ASP.NET websites and applications, we hope you'll buy Rocks' Beginning ASP.NET 4.5, which you can purchase as an ebook or print book from Rocks.com or anywhere you buy books.